dynasties have come and gone. Cities have risen into grandeur and fallen into decay. Thrones have reared their proud magnificence and crumbled into the dust of oblivion. Nations have swollen into greatness and melted into insignificance. Through it all has come a sobering truth on the nature of mankind. Their impact on the world has rarely been their triumphs and all too often their frailties. It was human weakness that created the ruins of Kavzar, the desolation of Nagash, and the dread power of Mordheim. And these will stand as monuments to the human race far longer than any statue or headstone. Yet, while the elder races might look down upon humanity with well-deserved scorn, they must do so tempered by the knowledge that while their own time has come and gone, mankind's brightest days may yet still lie ahead. The human race has stumbled and at times fallen, but in its struggle can be glimpsed the wonders they might achieve if their darker nature could be overcome. This vision of human potential is often fleeting, but sometimes takes root in an idea, a nation, or even a single soul. And perhaps the greatest blessing to befall the human race is that one such soul today rests with an Emperor Karl Franz, Elector Count and Grand Prince of Reichland, Protector of the Empire and the Defiler of the Dark. Even while still an infant, Karl Franz had the mark of destiny upon him. Born the only son of Emperor Litpold I in 2470, he was nearly slain before he had seen his first year. While traveling through Drakwald Forest, the Imperial family was set upon by beastmen. Nearly overrun, they were unexpectedly rescued by the Fey Folk of Athel Loren. The elves held no regard for the Emperor's gratitude, instead caring only for the child's safety, naming him Harathoi Koiran, or Young King in their tongue. Curiously, they seemed to speak to Karl Franz in prophecy, whispering to the infant to break it, then make it whole. Despite these cryptic portents that seemed to herald grandeur, Franz was not particularly well regarded by the nobility of the Empire and seemed ill-prepared for greatness. He developed a rakish and debonair reputation, far more likely to be spotted in a tavern or gambling den than in any chapel of Sigmar. The birth of his son seemed to ground Karl Franz though, and he began approaching the duties of his station with greater respect. Even at the age of 32, however, despite personal training from Ludwig Schwarzhelm, the Emperor's Sword of Justice, Franz had not participated in any major campaigns, and both his martial skill and statesmanship remained unproven. With the death of his father in 2502, Karl Franz inherited the titles of Prince of Altdorf and Elector Count of Reichland, along with the ancestral sword the Rune Fang Dragon's Tooth. One of his first official duties was to cast his vote and decide who would succeed his father as the new emperor. Despite his prestigious titles, most elector counts did not consider Karl Franz a strong contender for the throne, viewing him as too young and unproven to be a serious choice. It was only out of a sense of loyalty to his father that he cast a vote for himself, but was content to live a comparatively tranquil life as merely the ruler of Reichland. While voted a distant second to Boris Todbringer of Middenland, neither candidate received enough support to be named Emperor. As a second vote was organized, Karl Franz took to patrolling the forest surrounding Altdorf to better acquaint himself with the capital. During one such patrol, the prince and his retinue were set upon by forest goblins, only for Franz to single-handedly slay an enormous Arachnarok spider and the goblin shaman riding atop it. As his men rallied around him, one of his Reichsguard revealed himself to be an assassin. Exhausted after the goblin ambush, Karl Franz would have been murdered at this man's hand, if not for the sudden appearance of a mysterious ethereal figure. This ghostly emerald knight parried the blade meant for Franz and then slew the would-be assassin. Before he vanished, the knight ordered Franz to meet with the king of neighboring Bretonia before the second vote could be called, warning that if the old grudges that divided mankind were not overcome, the Three-Eyed King would destroy them both. Despite his apprehension, Karl Franz met with King Loan Leonkur in the Imperial Fortress of Helmgart. Through a vision of prophecy granted to him by his own goddess, the Lady of the Lake, King Leonkur had come to believe that only through Karl Franz could the realms of man be saved from the predations of chaos. Here, the Bretonian King unknowingly repeated words Karl Franz had heard far earlier, claiming the lady had spoken, something must be broken, shattered, before it can be remade anew. 
Though he did not remember the first time he heard these words, Franz was convinced by this strange encounter, and he arrived back in the capital with far greater resolve. Through a mixture of cunning guile, political idealism, and public displays of unifying rhetoric, Franz swayed several of the elector counts to his cause. But the head of the cult of Sigmar, the Grand Theogonist Volkmar von Hindenstern, grew enraged when Franz spoke of the Lady of the Lake's prophecy, claiming no emperor would ever heed the words of a foreign god. Mere moments before the vote, however, Volkmar saved Franz from another would-be assassin's blade, recognizing a mark upon the assailant as that of the Dark God Zinch, the Great Deceiver. In the second vote, Franz's fiercest rival, Boris Todbringer, realized that the tide had turned against him. Wanting a strong empire more than the emperorship, he was the first to bow to the newly crowned Emperor Franz I. As his first act, Karl Franz brought the symbol of his office, the legendary Warhammer Galmaraz, down on one of his closest supporters, killing not a man, but a horrible abomination of the Dark Gods. The attack revealed to the Elector Counts the taint of chaos that had infiltrated their ranks, and been behind the many attempts on Franz's life. With the efforts of the ruinous powers to prevent his ascension to the throne wholly thwarted, Karl Franz moved to unite his fractured empire. His first campaign burned out the beastmen and chaos cultists that had taken root in the wilderness, and slaughtered Norsken raiders that had once preyed upon imperial coastlines unopposed. During subsequent wars against the Greenskins of Wa Spleen Ripper and the eastern hordes of Merkel High the Savage, Emperor Franz finally proved his martial prowess, personally striking down Orc war bosses and champions of the ruinous powers. Franz was swiftly recognized as one of the greatest emperors of the modern era. His unwavering loyalty to the Empire gained the respect of both his own people and the other great nations and races that bordered the nation. Gifted a griffin egg taken from some great peak by the Wood Elves, Franz hatched and raised the creature to maturity himself. Deathclaw, as the beast came to be known, was reputed to be among the mightiest Imperial Griffins to have ever lived. The image of Emperor Franz riding atop its mighty form became iconic, replicated across tapestries and spoken of in epic poems across the whole of the Old World. Countless victories cemented Franz as a national hero, but it was in the Third Battle of Blackfire Pass that he was first seen as a worthy successor to the God King Sigmar himself. In 2519, the Imperial Army, with Franz in command, responded to the growing threat of an Orc War approaching Avaland. Blackfire Pass was the natural choke point with which to confront the Horde, and Franz arrived only barely in advance of the Greenskins. The carnage that erupted was the equal of any battle to have ever been fought in the Old World, with even Deathclaw brutally mauled by a giant in service to the Orcs and forced to retire to the rear. At first, the battle seemed to favor neither side, until a surprise charge by Orc cavalry smashed through the Imperial artillery. As the Empire's lines collapsed, Marius Leetdorf, Elector Count of Avaland, was killed in personal combat with the Orc war boss Vorbad Ironjaw. At this sight, the Emperor was left with only a single chance to rally the Imperial forces, and charged forth with his remaining knights to face down the war boss himself. It is said that Franz fought Iron Jaw with furious resolve, but could not match the brute strength of the war boss, and was forced to his knees. Yet, at the very moment he should have perished, Franz was enveloped in a golden aura, rising again to his feet, not as the black armored emperor, but rather, if the stories can be believed, as a fur clad barbarian king. While this primal visage lasted only an instant, the ancient battle cry he bellowed stunned the Orc war boss, and that split second of hesitation cost Vorbad his life. The astonishing victory at Blackfire Pass and the pivotal role Emperor Franz played has been used to great effect ever since. Seemingly favored by Sigmar himself, Franz has skillfully leveraged his image within the Empire to win both the support of the people and the various Elector Counts. Today, he is widely seen as one of the greatest statesmen in the Old World, regarded as the equal of any elven king or dwarven lord. His ability to know when to compromise and when to stand firm has turned potential confrontations or even civil wars into opportunities for reconciliation. So great is his political prowess that what to a lesser emperor might be jealous rivals are to Franz stalwart allies. As a patron of the magical arts and sciences, Franz has worked to expand human understanding. 
With his support, the Imperial School of Engineering has achieved astonishing breakthroughs, while the Colleges of Magic have become more and more prominent within Imperial armies. Under his reign, the promise of an empire under a just and moral standing seems possible. Karl Franz seemingly has a vision for humanity beyond that of his contemporaries, and he has dedicated his life to realizing that vision through sheer will. But he is still just a man, a man born into a world of unceasing war and endless terrors. His reign has seen him confront wonders and horrors, but the greatest foe still lies ahead. Bold deeds and great courage are needed against the encroaching darkness, and the fate of the world, be it damnation or salvation, will soon be decided. In Dossier, the Templin Institute investigates the legendary figures from alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 